So in this video, we're going to be talking about New Kingdom Egypt and how everything changes for the Egyptians during this time. So um, uh, uh, Egypt in the Late Bronze Age is, uh, is being forced to interact a great deal more with the rest of the world. Um, and uh, one of the consequences of this is that Egypt uh, becomes much more uh, invested in becoming a, a fully-fledged empire uh, with, uh, with conquests to the south uh, in Kush uh, and uh, Nubia and uh, to the north in Canaan and Syria, Mesopotamia. Um, one of the major reasons for this is that the Late Bronze Age um, 1500 to uh, 1200, the uh, the period of the New Kingdom, is a time of, of great economic trade empires, and uh, in order for Egypt to survive, it has to uh, it has to stand up at the same level. It has to um, be able to uh, um, to uh, uh, to resist. Um, the economic and political and military power of the Assyrians, uh, the Hittites, the Mycenaeans, or uh, risk being overwhelmed um, by those uh, by those powers, uh, Egypt has to um, stand shoulder to shoulder with them. Um, and uh, this creates a, a, a new kind of vulnerability that Egypt is not at all comfortable with. Um, it also means that uh, this is a world in which Egypt is, is on a world stage. It is interacting with, uh, with other peoples in a, uh, in a sort of a, a globalized economy. Um, and uh, as a result, uh, the uh, Egyptian society is more fragmented. The Egyptian power structure is more fragmented than it was. Um, the, the pharaoh in New Kingdom Egypt it can no longer be all-powerful. Um, the New Kingdom Egypt um, uh, is a period in which uh, the, the pharaoh is one of, of several centers of power. Um, the, uh, the the uh, the uh, the the necessity for trade on a on a on a uh, on an international scale um, requires a, a industry requires a commercial enterprise um, requires a, the acquisition of um, of new resources uh, and uh, and uh, new markets. Uh, it requires a, a great deal more interaction with the rest of the world. Uh, it requires a, a, um, a, a, uh, and the result of this is the presence of a focus of, of power among uh, merchants, among manufacturers, uh, an economic center of gravity to uh, the Egyptian society that is separate from the pharaoh. Um, the the presence of foreign peoples uh, um, creates a much more visibly um, diverse uh, 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 Egyptian society, uh, and uh, this uh, breaks Egypt away visibly and physically from its uh, its unified monolithic past, um, and uh, the with the the pharaoh weakened. Um, by this divided society, this gives an opportunity for other centers of power to emerge and challenge the supremacy of the pharaoh. Um, and in particular, the, the, the priests uh, become rivals for the uh, pharaoh in, um, in control over, over custom, uh, tradition, and, uh, and, and culture within, uh, within Egypt. Uh, and so... Um, we have a presence of, of foreigners at multiple levels, as we'll see. The uh, the commercial enterprise means that there are um, that there are uh, uh, and and also Egypt's past history of, of conquest by the Hyksos uh, means that uh, Egypt is more divided uh, socially than it had been before. Um, the priests emerge as as. Um, as factors in Egyptian society as they never had before. Um, this also means that, uh, uh, that uh, precedents can be challenged in new ways. Uh, um, Egypt's hold on uh, things being the way that they have always been 
is is eroded and fractured by this new kind of eroded and fractured society. One of the manifestations of this is that um, is that uh, uh, during the New Kingdom, women within uh, the nobility and within the imperial family become uh, more prominent than they, they had ever been before, including the uh, uh, the rise of an actual female pharaoh. Uh, there are actually a number of cases of 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 women during the New Kingdom uh, that have some sort of uh, prominence uh, as, uh, as, as regents, um, as, uh, as, uh, as dowagers that uh, have uh, a great deal of influence over the, uh, uh, over, over the rule of uh, Egypt and so forth. But uh, the most prominent by far is Hatshepsut, who, um, who reigns as pharaoh um, you know, co-pharaoh with a, a junior male figure who she uh, completely dominates um, for, um, you know, for a considerable period of time. And uh, Hatshepsut is able to um, uh, make a, a significant impact on, uh, on uh, Egyptian society, um, the uh, the the law that says that the the pharaoh must be male is um, circumvented simply by um, you know Hatshepsut saying that uh, that she is the king and and therefore you know what she says is the law. Her imagery early on in her reign uh, has her presented as a male pharaoh. Uh, uh, identical to other male pharaohs, identical to her junior co-ruler. Um, later on, even this is abandoned, and uh, a great deal of imagery exists of her, um, you know, very obviously as a as a female with uh, you know with breasts without um, the uh, the the symbolic male beard and so forth. Um, and uh, uh, you know her her uh, her reign is uh, is stable and prosperous. Um, the only thing that uh, that causes a problem is uh, after she has, uh, you know, successfully reigned and uh, and passed away. Um, two decades on from this, uh, there is an effort to eliminate her from the history and from records. This is a process known as damnatio memoriae. Uh, in in Roman times, uh, uh, the the effort to remove Hatshepsut seems to be um, uh, not out of uh, you know vindictiveness uh, by the junior co ruler who uh, has now been uh, reigning uh, on his own after her death, um, but uh, more to try to ensure that uh, that uh, her reign is not made to be a a precedent to ensure that. Um, you know that women are always going to be um, viable candidates for the the pharaohship, uh, an effort to uh, sort of restore the um, the customs and traditions that had gone before. This is of limited success in a number of ways. There continue to be prominent women in New Kingdom Egypt, and the effort to remove her from the records. Um, by walling up her uh, the, her uh, her inscriptions and by burying her statues in in a pit, had the ironic effect of um, uh, of ensuring that uh, those uh, inscriptions and and uh, and statues were in fact uh, extremely well preserved against the ravages of time and uh, and marauders and vandals, and so we actually have. Uh, an excellent record uh, and a wide array of imagery of Hatshepsut, so thanks to the uh, attempt to remove her from uh, from history. Uh, another famous example of of, uh, of prominent women in New Kingdom Egypt, Nefertiti. Uh, again, it's uh, it's kind of interesting that uh, one of the reasons that we um, uh, we have a, a a, a, an awareness of Nefertiti is uh, as a result of, of imagery of her that has survived into modern times, in particular this extremely famous uh, portrait uh, that was done of her. Um, there are a wide number of, of, of busts of Nefertiti 
uh, uh, that uh, that have survived that were uh, commissioned during her lifetime as queen uh, alongside uh, a a male king, uh, a male pharaoh. So Nefertiti is not a, a a pharaoh in herself, but she is is acting as. A, a very powerful woman. Her presence is being felt throughout Egypt, all the more remarkably because she seems to have come from outside the royal family. Um, and so there's a, there's, there's a, um, uh, one of the upshots of this is that the focus has expanded outward from the Pharaoh himself uh, to the to the wider reaches of the imperial family uh, as part of the sort of um, reduction in the 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 immensity of the pharaoh himself um, another pharaoh who uh, stands out during the new kingdom as um, as representing the the changed circumstances of Egypt during this time is uh, is Akhenaten. Uh, Akhenaten is remarkable for attempting to uh, to alter the Egyptian religion uh, uh, away from the, uh, the the polytheism uh, that uh, in, in its customary form to uh, instead uh, um, provide an emphasis on uh, the the sun god uh, and to uh, and and on himself as as the avatar of that particular uh, manifestation of the divine to the uh, diminution not necessarily the exclusion but rather the diminution of the importance of all of the other gods um, and uh, it's it's clear that the reason that Akhenaten is doing this is not primarily out of um, out of concern for you know religious dogma uh, or you know it to to actually you know alter the relationship of of Egypt with the gods, but rather uh, in in defiance of the prominence of the priests um, uh, who are. Uh, who are focused on uh, the the rituals that have um, increased their own power uh, and, uh, and and the the gods that they have a particularly powerful relationship with uh, in particular the the god Amun. Uh, so Akhenaten is is, is essentially, uh, in, in in a way, even though he's defying custom and tradition, he's doing so in order to attempt to restore the the potency, the singular potency of the pharaoh. Uh, this is uh, this is allowed to you know continue through the uh, the through the lifetime of Akhenaten, but uh, once he dies. Things very quickly uh, revert to the way that they had always been. Um, the the priests uh, very easily convince Akhenaten's successor, his son-in-law, um, to uh, to take a name uh, and t that uh, that reflects the power of of Amun and of the priests, um, and uh, to uh, to to embrace. Um, you know the, the 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 way things had been before uh, Akhenaten's reform of the religion. Uh, the the son-in-law who uh, takes the place of Akhenaten is known to us as Tutankhamun, uh, the one of the most famous of the Egyptian pharaohs, um, partly because of the his his tomb was discovered undisturbed. So. Um, this is the Tutankhamun. We have a unique example of the the splendor with which the pharaohs were buried. But uh, Tutankhamun was, you know, as a teenager, who was, uh, you know, in no position to resist the the power of the priests as as it had grown um, by the time of the New Kingdom dynasties. Um, as I mentioned. Uh, there is a greater need and drive to uh, to to conquer rather than simply to 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 dominate um, the the land surrounding Egypt, in particular um, Nubia and Kush to the south. This has a, a couple of effects. One is that uh, that um, that Nubia is uh, is. Uh, 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 even though it is uh, 
uh, absorbed and, and loses its independence, loses its power as a part of the Egyptian empire uh, and as a source of things that, uh, of resources that are not available in Egypt itself, uh, Nubia becomes an integral part of Egyptian power and um, Nubian manpower, Nubian um, will, Nubian identity becomes a force within New Kingdom Egypt, um, becomes one of the factors in, in uh, in helping to make uh, the Egyptian Empire strong and powerful. Uh, it also means that um, you know, Nubia and Egypt had been uh, engaging in cultural interaction for, uh, for thousands of years. And so when you, uh, when you visit you know, the, the, the remains and ruins in, in Nubia, you're finding that there is a, a profound uh, Egyptian influence um, some of that influence, uh, you know, culturally can go the other way. Uh, but um, one of the, the nice examples of this is that um, there's a great deal of cultural influence in terms of, of religion amongst the Nubians from Egypt, and the Egyptian pantheon represents, uh, uh, corresponds very closely to the Egyptian ones, uh, with the exception that the, the Nubians have... Um, their own god that represents uh, the Nubian identity itself, uh, and their own divine protector for their people that the Egyptians do not have. Um, another foreign influence within Egypt is the presence of a Semitic underclass. Uh, the, the great wealth of, of Egypt, even at its low points, meant that uh, it began to attract uh, immigration in the form of, of large quantities of, of poor Semitic peoples from Canaan and Mesopotamia, from the Fertile Crescent. Uh, and um, and um, this, uh, 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 this leads to the development of a Semitic underclass that ends up performing uh, a, a vast amount of the, the manual labor that is being undertaken in New Kingdom Egypt with the result that the Egyptian citizenry sort of uh, drifts upward into a middle class that has to do less and less. Um, that uh, are you know sort of living in a sort of a low grade luxury with um, with a a slave and, and laborer class underneath them um, doing uh, doing all of the uh, unpleasant uh, chores of, of society um, and uh, the Egyptians uh, then become uh, dependent on this underclass of laborers in order for their society to function. Um, uh, with the result that uh, when the Egyptian society starts to break down and uh, and uh, some of the tribes of Semitic laborers uh, uh, flee Egypt, uh, it, it, most notably the Hebrews and what they remember afterwards as uh, um, as the the great exodus from Egypt, um, this uh, greatly undermines the stability of the Egyptian economy and becomes a part of of uh, the Egyptian collapse um, and and the uh, the the overall collapse of the of the Bronze Age, the Egyptians remember this as the period of calamities. The and the um, the departure of the of the Hebrews is uh, and is only a part of the uh, the overall instability of the end of the Bronze Age. Uh, all of the Bronze Age powers had been uh, accelerating their their trade rivalry accelerating their uh, industrial production and um, their uh, uh, their aggressive uh, import export trade economy uh, to a point that it became unsustainable to a point that it outstripped the um, the, the the agricultural base of their economies this uh, this downfall began in in Mycenae and um, uh, uh, Greece and resulted in uh, a flood of refugees into uh, the Fertile Crescent and uh, into the territory of the Egyptian Empire, uh, including the arrival of, uh, of a contingent of, of um, 
uh, of um, Indo-Europeans from the Aegean uh, that uh, that uh, that took away that fought the Egyptians for uh, land in the, in southern Canaan and and um, and uh, the the war against them further destabilized an already collapsing Egyptian power structure. So the uh, so the uh, uh, the unbalancing arrival of the Sea Peoples, as they were known. Um, uh, led to the, the downfall of the new kingdom itself. And the Sea Peoples were able to establish themselves in what had been Egyptian territory in uh, southern Canaan uh, and became known during the Iron Age as the Philistines. And so um, with the downfall of the new kingdom in the, in the period of calamities, uh, the, the story of Egypt essentially, um, you know, uh, uh, diminishes. Uh, Egypt continues to be, you know, a comfortable, prosperous place. But uh, as a, a, a as a powerful culture, as a powerful nation, as a powerful military, as a powerful empire, um, its uh, its last days have passed. And for Egypt, that's that.